Yo, hello, hello, welcome to another video of the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and in this video I'm going to talk about the chapter Get Ready of the book The Origin of Most Problems. So now that we understand what the game is all about and that the game creates the problems, we are going to get ready for the fight. But for that we need to understand the players of this game. The Trump superhero has now a mental breakdown. He is talking to an alien and he is saying, our oh, world is so fucked up, there are so many problems and he really struggles to explain people the vastness of all the problems. Because if he shows too little then people don't get that we really need to change something and if he explains too many of the problems then people might be sick of hearing about them. Because you know the Trump superhero reads about the crap and the act every day and he knows of so many problems like there's slavery in the fruits and vegetable industry, there's slavery in Britain, slavery again in Britain, countries and companies sell weapons to fill wars big store chains enslave people, councils are dickheads, USA accepts having a lot of poor children. There are people whose sole job is to make us consumers, even terrorists kidnap people for profit, there's slavery in the USA, even puppies are a big business and charlatans have been selling vitamins for ages even though they are useless and so much more. So he is saying, how can I explain to you, dear alien reader, the severity of the crap and the immense power of the act? Maybe my emotional breakdown was enough for you to understand it, maybe you are already familiar with this. But let me try something different. And he wants us to think about our favorite teacher. So imagine we are in school and that the teacher is cool and smart and slightly funny and the way he presents the subjects in class is so entertaining. And he even organizes school trips, he listens to our problems and overall he's a good sport. And he's even a little bit like a role model for us. But what we don't know is how he is personally and when he comes home and that's how his daughter knows him. Um, she knows him more personally than we do and she sees him every time he comes home drunk and talks dirty and becomes violent. She even saw him beating her mother occasionally. She sees him talking badly about students including us and how he complains that his job sucks but he has to do it for the money. Often she is even afraid of him because he acts inappropriately around her and she feels abused. So the Trump superhero explains, because you only know this guy from your classroom as a teacher, you don't have the insight into who he really is. You only see his teacher mask but not what's beneath it. And only the people who know this guy personally, like his daughter, know the real man behind the profession. And the girl will get angry if she hears that you look up to this man, to this monster. So, and the Trump superhero explains, this is the sentiment one feels towards entities like Google, Netflix, Microsoft, Apple, USA, China, Romania, Facebook, Coca-Cola, Amazon and so forth. Once one spends intimate time with these entities, knowing them up close behind their masks. He explains, knowing these players of the game of trade behind the deceiving curtain is a must in order for people to understand what they face. And of course he's also saying the players of this world are not limited to these big players. Every one of us taking part in the game of trade gets to act according to the game. And the entire Tron project is about showcasing these players at work, corrupt and violent, deceptive and destructive, and so far in this book you understood those players even better. However, there is something very interesting about the biggest players of this world that has to be showcased in order for you or anyone else to get a grasp of who they are and what they are capable of. And now he shows us Privatopus and Statopus. 
So, dear you, if we were to look at the world from the outside, from the alien perspective, then this trade game that we play has two big, fat, tall, smelly players, state and private, the government and the companies, the abuser and the charlatan. So he explains that those two octopuses, the statopus and the privatopus, they are um, much more important than like all the other things because the other things are just parts of those. Um, of course countries change in time and also companies they come and they go but what's more eternal are um, the statopus and privatopus. That statopus, that privatopus. And the statopus is like, okay fuckers, you work, you make money, we take a percentage of that money. You have no choice but to comply and with the money we take from you, we will stuff for you, little piglets. Like roads, healthcare, stadiums, create events, shit like that. It's true that we are getting filthy rich on your back and the services we provide might be shitty, but you have no choice. It's true that we pretend to care about you while our main purpose is to shift the power from you to a handful <coughs> politicians, but what can you do? We also have tons of rules that you cannot break and you need to give us as much information about yourself as possible so that we can control you. We want to know how many of you fuckers are out there, what you do, what you want, if you respect our rules or not. If you dare not to comply, we will fuck you up because we have police and armies and such goodies. Money, cryptocurrencies, other trades, we want them all and will control them all. So shut up and roll. And the privatopus is like you tiny, squishy, little and powerful, wonderful, beautiful creatures of all colors and races and genders. We don't force you to do anything. We are so neutral. We are here and only if you want, you can come to us. We invest our own money and efforts to create stuff for you like smartphones, clothes, houses, gadgets, medicine and so many other sweet, sweet things. We make you offers that are hard to refuse and we will take advantage of poor people to maximize our profits. But no one forces you to be a slave to us. We are so not guilty. You see, we ask for nothing, even though in most cases you either have no choice but to come to us or we successfully persuade you to come to us. We invest first and need to take our investment back from you. So we will do whatever is possible to get our investments back from you plus a huge profit and lots more than that. So we lie and exaggerate claims about our products and services. We are the masters of language and confuse you with our terms and conditions. We sell you stuff that you don't need and services that you don't use. We are experts in persuasion. But we don't force it on anyone. Thank you very much and have a great weekend. The Statopus is the abuser so it doesn't care. Yeah, we spy on you, but so what? Fuck off. And in contrast, the Privatopus is a charlatan. No, 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 we never spy on you. We only collect data to protect you. That's their main difference. Now let's look at both individually. The Privatopus is like bless you, trade with me and the Statopus is like fuck you, trade with me. The Trump superhero explains 20 tribes account for 70% of the world population. This means that only 20 tribe leaders have tremendous influence over 5.3 billion human beings. China, India and the USA together, three tribes have control and influence to over 3 billion people. Can you imagine that? That's complete hegemony. Countries, tribes are statopuses farts. Remember that. We are now going to look at six of the statopus tentacles. There is abuse, war, corruption, propaganda, control and surveillance. So the first two things we are going to look at are surveillance and control. Basically the guy is saying America is the land of free, but the Trump superhero adds and the land of surveillance and control. Because he explains the National Security Agency, the NSA, um, which is the security part of the US tribe, spied on millions of their members 
and on millions of people from other tribes. And they did all of the spying behind everyone's back and partially with the help of companies who provided backdoors for the state. And he explains that they also extended this spying on to other tribes because you know if I, I live now in Germany, if I use Facebook, luckily I don't have Facebook anymore, but if I use it um, then it's going through their servers which are in the US so the NSA can also collect data about me. And that's what they did. Um, the Trump superhero says in this manner they extend their tentacles of surveillance everywhere. He now just explains um, exactly and in detail what happened. They got access to data from nine huge companies like Facebook, Microsoft, Google, Yahoo, PolTalk, YouTube, Skype, Apple and AOL. And they collected email, instant messages, videos, photos, stored data, voice chats, file transfers, video conferences, login times and social network profile details. The Trump superhero explains that on top of this, an agency like the NSA has also access to CCTV cameras, data from all kinds of companies, utilities and other agencies. And they can even collect data from using drones. So there are many ways for um, those kind of entities to collect um, data about people. And he's also explaining this whole spying thing is nothing new, of course. There was even a similar program in 1945 where it was just about collecting um, as much data about the population as possible. He also explains that one very scary thing to consider is that although this mass surveillance was continuously being uncovered since 2005, it wasn't until 2013 that someone who worked for the NSA, Edward Snowden, leaked a shit ton of documents revealing all of this beauty. There are two things to learn from this. One is that Statopus can be sneaky as fuck and hard to detect. And second, that it takes years and years to prove such things because of how well they are hidden and often insiders have to take the matter into their own hands and risk their lives exposing these abusers. And you know the crazy thing is also that the NSA is calling Edward Snowden as the biggest thief in US history and they are going after him and he is facing up to 10 years in prison and now he is a fugitive and lives in the Russian tribe to avoid getting punished by the US tribe. I think he lives in Moscow now. And it's really crazy because he's just showing how the US tribe is collecting so much data and they are now um, considering him a thief. It's so fucked up. The Trump superhero explains, you see, the statopus makes the rules. It gets to decide who is a thief or not, who gets punished or not. The abusive statopus may argue that it spied on its own citizens to find the bad guys but whatever its reason, Statopus took the decision itself to do that without the permission of its citizens. Democracy, anyone? And the Trump superhero also explains that the mass surveillance that the US engaged into was mind-bogglingly complex and no one knew about it for a long time. But for one, this is happening anywhere in the world and in any tribe or any time and second, there are no consequences for these acts of abuse because who can punish the biggest abuser there is. Now it's about censorship. As mentioned earlier, China has control over 700 million people online and they have this great firewall of China where they basically filter everything and they block a lot of stuff that they don't like. Um, they block websites like Google, Facebook, YouTube, um, Yahoo, Ch the Chinese Wikipedia, Twitter, Instagram, the New York Times, Vimeo, Dropbox, Archive.org, Reuters and so much more. And of course any tribe does this sort of thing, banning the internet as they prefer and for all kinds of reasons. The Trump superhero shows us here a map, how this is done worldwide and he is um, going to focus on the ones who have little or no censorship and or surveillance. So the green tribes, 
and he is saying that even in those tribes there are uh, web filters and there are websites blocked um, so it is even in those countries it's not censorship free he shows us Wikipedia, which is an educational website, trade-free and community-driven, but it is still completely or partially blocked in China, France, Iran, Pakistan, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Thailand, Tunisia, Turkey, United Kingdom and Uzbekistan. Back to China, where the Trump superhero says when a bunch of people want to decide for 1.3 billion others, then the alarm should ring louder than the thunder. And he says, of course, the tentacles of Statopus extend everywhere, not only online. China has stored data of 95 of its population. That's some 1.3 billion people. Social scores, anyone? Also, China tracks down and punishes Chinese activists who speak against the government, even when they are not even living in China anymore. So this is really like it's dictatorship, right? It's completely fucked up. And the same thing happens in India where a few politicians or a few people control 460 million people online and they also collect data and um, yeah, track everything what they do there. The Trump superhero explains, there you go, if you only take China, USA and India, then billions of people, 40% of the world's population are under 24 hour surveillance by the Statopus, proven as a fact and controlled by it. Statopus knows every move of everyone, everything they do, when they do it and with whom. It wants to control the trade world by keeping an eye on everything that moves, you sneaky Statopus. And now he recommends two documentaries where you can um, see how large populations of people are being surveyed and how this has transformed into a business because of the trade bubble. And as the Trump superhero explained with the Internet of Things that will allow for a greater mining of data and as a result greater power to companies or states here too it is scary to think that the advancement of technology will give a greater power to state opposed to surveil people. So he's just thinking of different scenarios where you have to provide your biometric, your um, body data like the DNA, the iris, the detailed 3D face scan and the updated fingerprint and he's saying you have to um, provide them if you want access to some stuff like how long does it take until you can only get a home if you identify with your biometrics? Go to a shopping center but you can't enter until you provide your facial fingerprint. Use a car but only after you are registered with your DNA print. You want a life insurance? Let us see your in-house activities and patterns. You want food? Let us see your hobbies. You want healthcare access? Let us see what you eat and drink. Biometrics, in-house gadgets, the outside world that's full of cameras, sensors, police and so forth. Your smart clothing, car or phone. Who do you think will keep an eye on them all? So there was a long part, the abuse and corruption part will be a little bit shorter. Basically the guy is saying, I think that our government does a good thing monitoring the citizens. After all, if you have something to hide, you are doing something bad. Our government cares about our safety and protects us, so I disagree with you entirely. But the Trump superhero is like, well, not so fast, cowboy. He explains that it's hard to argue that the Statopus only cares about its tribe members when you consider all the dangerous, primitive and moronic laws that are all around the world which hurt or kill people. Plus, consider the actions of the Statopus who imposes what he thinks is right or wrong for billions of people. That alone is extremely problematic. And he shows us an extremely awful abuse that many may not be aware of. The abuse of psychology by the Statopus. We even have a book about psychology where we show the limits of it because it is riddled with assumptions and a bad practice of science. 
So that explains how Statopus can take advantage of the poorly defined so-called mental illnesses. For example, in Canada, Quebec more exactly, uh, 20,000 children were wrongly hospitalized as having a mental illness in the 40s and 50s. The Statopus in Quebec was very much Christian and most of those children were orphans, but not any kind of orphans. Their parents were not married and the children were abandoned, something the mighty Christian faith considered as unacceptable. Therefore, Quebec made it so that these children were diagnosed with a mental illness and locked them up for about 10 to 20 years and on top of that these children were sexually, physically and mentally abused by those who should have been taken care of them. And they were also used as guinea pigs, drugs were tested on them and some medical experiments were done on them. But there was basically nothing wrong with them. So yeah, the Trump superhero just shows that's how this power of um, labeling someone as mentally ill can be um, misused. China has also a bad history of doing such awful acts of abuse, incarcerating activists, people complaining against injustices by local authorities, human rights workers, those who may engage into and quoting political harm to society or the so-called political maniacs and so forth on the same basis of mental illness. China seems to be continuing these practices to the present. And similar things also happen in other tribes like India, Cuba, Russia, Norway, USA and perhaps any tribe. It is easy to see how well can such an opaque field like psychiatry and psychology be used to abuse by the statopus. Sad because you can't afford shit in this world? Well, you might be depressed and need some assistance. Angry because you have to work from 9 to 5 every single day? Here, some drugs for you to calm your tits down and maybe we will lock you up for your safety. Are you confused and don't know how the fuck to navigate in this retarded society? Oh, you might be bipolar. The immensity of abuse that can be done through the misuse of psychiatry and psychology is tremendous, the Trump superhero is explaining. And of course, the abuse of psychology is just one single example as there are endless examples from all around the world in all kinds of flavors. Amnesty International, International Federation of Human Rights, Human Rights Watch, World Organization Against Torture, Freedom House and International Freedom of Expression Exchange are the world's most well-known watchdogs of governmental abuse and they showcase the Statopus at work all around the globe. Statopus uses its power to abuse its own members so that it keeps control over the trade world. And Statopus is also a corrupt bastard for the love of power and profit. And the last part about Statopus and today's video is war and propaganda. The guy is saying the Syrian government is mass killing Syrian people with the support of Russia. This is outrageous. America should intervene. And then the other guy is saying Bullocks, Americans are making up stories to invade Syria. But then the Trump superhero says guys you are both wrong and right. All states lie. It is their most well known quality. The biggest form of abuse from the Statopus is war. War is go and kill, that's it. For the past 2500 years an average of or around 380 million human beings have died because of war. The number might be a lot higher than that though. So this is now basically a graphic. Um, to put that in perspective, the Trump superhero says 1000 years ago there have been around 400 million people on planet Earth and the wars from the last 2500 years could have easily wiped out all that uh, population, almost that population. And also in the last uh, 100 years, 120 million people have been killed in wars. So 
the Trump superhero explains that um, wars are very much, if not entirely, because of trade. Tribes want land, resources, power, so they conquer. The only reason we may not see a world war today is because the trade agreements are kind of working between the big tribes for their own interests, like Russia, China or USA. But you know, there are many smaller wars like in Syria or Iraq. And of course, not to mention that war is just a profit making machine. So yeah, I live in the German tribe and you know, the German uh, government sells a lot of weapons to countries that of course they say they don't sell weapons to countries where there are conflicts but in the end those weapons that have been sold from here um, end up being used in, in these conflict zones so somehow magical but yeah that's how it is of course it's a huge business and I know that many German companies make a lot of uh, money by selling weapons and tanks and all that um, kind of equipment and the last part is about um, propaganda which is basically another way for the statopus to keep his status in this trade world by lying so for example what happened in world war one was that the usa recruited 75,000 volunteers who would give speeches about war and social events and they were called four minute men because their presentations were four minute long and they understood the short attention span of the population. And that was the social media back then. In just one year they had given over 7.5 million speeches in about 5200 communities reaching 314 million people. And that was the viral marketing back then, like a really good viral marketing. And it's not so easy to reach that on Facebook. But yeah, I won't go into detail right now. Um, everything is provided here. There are some documentaries recommended. It's just um, another way of um, like influencing people and for the state to keep its power. And so that statopus, which needs only a handful of tentacles to rule over billions of people, surveying them, abusing them, controlling them, lying to them, stealing from them, killing them. So yeah, that was a pretty long video, but now we met the first of the two octopuses, um, statopus. So the next video will be about privatopus, of course. Um, which will be very interesting because we will show how 175 companies own pretty much everything what you can see out there in the world of goods and services. So I'm excited for that. I look forward to that video. Um, see you then. As always, take care and much love.